Welcome back everyone. Today is Tuesday, January 24th, and as I talked about in the last video, I was going to be building a uh, pole barn garage um, on David's house. Well, not on it, but detached, but for it. So, as you saw, I picked up the material. Tiger is investigating the roof of the 450 now. <laughs> and uh, so I've got those to unload. As I said, those are the the uh, roof purlins and the wall girts, and I've got eight by eights uh, for the for the posts. There's ten posts all together, right, Tiger? <laughs> you gonna make your way over? Come on. No. Okay. So I want to get this laid out, and I was debating on where to put it but I want it to be parallel it's going to be perpendicular but I still want the front of it to be parallel with the side of the house so what I did was I pulled I pulled an equal distance off the house so I got one pin there and one pin there and then I just extrapolated between those two and so I don't know if you can see the string but that is the that will be the line of the garage so now I can measure off that string back uh, probably gonna start it about where the tape measure is so it'll be about that looks to be about 46 inches or so back from that pin so I believe because that's Tiger's condo that's what we call it um, yeah, he loves that thing. He's got a heated bedroom in there and everything. But anyway, I'm going to start it about that distance out. And so it'll be 36 feet this way. Which this way doesn't matter as much. I kind of use, kind of where the 450 is, is a little bit of a drive that I use to go down to the shop and to the back. Uh, which I am going to put a stone on once I get all this done. But I think, I think somewhere in that range would be good. Um, that's the depth of it. That's 24 feet from the red end of the tape measure to just about where the truss is. But I need to move it towards me a little bit. Um, I don't want to move Tiger's condo. I got electricity run to it. And I've got it sloped for rain runoff. And uh, plus I'm not sure those wheels. I got wheels on it and two of them turn and I have a actually have a yoke in the front that you can pull it around with but i'm not sure those tires will hold air anymore that's about six seven years old so i doubt that those tires would hold air anymore i could pick it up with the skid steer but i no need to move it it, it gets good brake. it's a good uh, wind break over there with the trees and all that so all right so that's what i'm going to do just wanted to show you how i how i was getting my position and uh, like I said, I'm going to measure off that string, get my get my corners, and um, use the skid steer with the post hole digger and dig a two foot hole, three foot deep.
bringing the trusses up, put them together up there. I had put the first set together down here when I picked them up with this trailer and just spread them apart. They, they put them together when the paint was still wet and they were like all stuck together and the paint was all over my fingers and got all over my pants and it was a mess. So I spread them out to dry and um, I'm gonna put them together close to where they gotta go, which makes more sense. Here's how I am doing the trusses. I didn't video <laughs> when I was doing it, but I just did it. So I am just put it up next to it, put a temporary board underneath this one. It stayed fine. Put that one up, got it in place, put the bolts roughly in because there's there, the holes are oblong on those and then just clamped them together and now I'll tighten up the four and I'm actually adding as you can see on the other one I added uh, three more well really four more two more on each side I don't I don't think that's adequate enough I don't like it that way so that's what I'm doing all right the trusses are all together I put these I always put two by six blocks in because I like to at least pre-order the metal I mean you can do the order the walls as well if you make them specifically to a particular height that you're gonna do and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do I've got roll-up doors that I'm getting I'm picking them up um, I'm Wendy and I are going down to the auctions that uh, Chris Chris is going down to in Florida and I am picking up the um, I'm going to pick up the uh, the trusses uh, trusses. I'm going to pick up the roll up doors um, because they wanted $800 to to ship two doors from Florida to here. So um, and it, they're right in Orlando, right where we're going, uh, pretty close to it anyway. Um, so I'm going to bring them home. I'm going to bring the 450 down and just put them in the back, 10 foot doors. But I want to see them first before I before I actually cut the wall height probably, or not cut the wall height, but um, before I decide, you know, and the concrete floor needs to be in as well. So I know exactly where the header is gonna go. Um, so anyway, that's the scoop for that. So these are together, all bolted, ready to go. But I put the blocks in there because what you do is, you just hook the tape on here, get your overhang at the bottom, and just add four inches because that will bring you to about there, which is what you want. Um, and then you've got a ridge cap that goes on there. Um, so those are all set. Uh, I got the front laid out. 
so I'm gonna drill these tomorrow drill these well I guess it is drilling um, so that's it and that's the center those are the centers so they're off four inches um, you know because they go four inches either way so that's that so tomorrow I will uh, I will get these in I like to do it that way get these in and then I will square the rest of them off there's no need for me to do them all at once comes out much better if you um, less chance of error <laughs> if you do them this way it's easier to uh, square and mainly when you're by yourself it's not too easy to square this when you're by yourself um, so that's it so this is going to be there's going to be one parking bay here one parking bay here and this will be the empty space there's going to be a window same window as what's in david's room the same one there was going to be the same window below and i i changed it to um to that transom window so i have actually have that window so that is good i don't have to buy it and it'll match so that window is going to go there and then there's going to be a three foot door on the side so all right well next step will be uh will be digging drilling these i say drill them because it is drilling so that'll be tomorrow and set the post the other thing i have to do as i talked about before but i bought a um universal plate a skid steer adapter that i'm going to weld that that's a boom to lift trusses up the end actually extends out as well but i'm going to uh I'm gonna weld that on because it's I made it to go on my old red uh, Jinma 35 horse tractor and this will lift it higher and stronger and yeah it doesn't leak down like that one does so I'm going to uh, bring this around to the shop so that I can uh, get welding and fabricate what I need to do I'll show you when I do it doesn't have a very smooth ride no matter how slow you go this is on smooth ground but the tracks that's why it's tough to carry anything on it on a pallet that's not uh, fastened down because it vibrates all over the place in the wrong direction for the way I would like it to go. Well, maybe not. Maybe it'll be better to put it in this way. I was going to put it in butt first, but I think it'll be better to have the to have the uh, chain end go in first. I'm not going to put it in right now because I'm not doing it, but I want to get it, I want to get it close, so I think I'll just put it down right here. Yeah, I'll put it right here and then I'll move it in. Let's see, doing this one-handed. Of course, I can't see. do all right the rain has stopped <laughs> at least for now next week it's not looking too good but i'm going to uh, get these front posts in right now get them where they got to go these are the most crucial ones for the doorways so they're they're the right spacing and the back still will be the right spacing obviously but is not as critical down to the inch because of the doors so I'm back four inches in every direction for centers. I'm making a two-foot hole. 
for eight inch post that's the rule of thumb three times the size of your post for the hole that you want to use so i've taken the big uh the big bar jammed it down in the ground so i can see where to put the uh right the center of the bit so these are the four 24 inch four foot auger i'm going to go down three feet and that's more than adequate so and my string line will as i said i've left the pins in for so I can uh, run my string rather than set up batter boards and everything no need to do that you can do that on a bigger project but for this it's fine to do it like this at least that's the way that I'm going to do it and always do and it works well um, so we get a shot of uh, of drilling the holes huh. duckies are coming out Well, there you see makes quick work of it I just gotta get the little remnants there's a little remnants in there I use a hoe see it's not very much you can see it with the shadow but there's not very much left in there and I tamp it down anyway um, I use a tamper and then I put a concrete block in the bottom just so it's not on it's not down on the bottom and uh, gives a it makes it the other reason too it makes it easier to, to position it when you've got to get it where where you need it it's a lot easier to uh, to do it when it's down there if you're if it's in dirt it's harder to move it but you can slide it you can put the big bar down there and slide it and this dirt everything in here is coming out this is gonna have a concrete floor it's gonna have a slab so um, this has to come out anyway uh, I just sprinkled it out that way and I'm gonna get the four in one bucket remove that and then I'm going to actually remove just the just the top layer of these organics of this weed uh, system that's over here and then I'm gonna put some uh, 
I'm going to put some gravel down underneath before the concrete goes in. Okay, the holes are ready. Those four, anyway, like I said, I'm going to do those first. So now it's time to put the 8 by 8s in the hole. So I've showed this before, but let me get this down so I can show you. Hopefully that's in the screen. Let me do it here. So when putting it on the fork, you don't want to just put the, the eye over it because it can slip. So if you take and put the major part of the strap through the eye, it will put a cow hitch on there and that will will not slip because the weight will cinch down tightly on it. Tiger's coming to inspect. Yeah, there's a big hole for you. Don't go down there. So there you go. So you just get four braces on it. I just use clamps. Don't move my string, Tiger. <laughs> so this is the one that starts everything. So everything will be squared off of this. And the front, obviously, is parallel to the line. And when you do it, you want to get it just... You don't want to touch the line. So you get about... Uh, about an eighth of an inch away from the line because if you touch the line then you'll move the line and then they'll all be out of whack so you definitely just leave about an eighth of an inch so you can eyeball that if you can't eyeball an eighth of an inch then you probably won't be doing this but so that's basically uh, what you do and then uh, concrete and it, what you can do as well which I do a lot and I'm not doing on this um, but a lot of times I'll, I'll drill through and I'll put a half inch rebar each way sticking out um, four inches on either side to put a one foot rebar through it um, but I'm not going to do that here because it's a little overkill because these will be cut down it won't be as tall but if like for the shop in the back they're in the they're in those because those are uh, are much taller so it gives it a little bit more resistance to pulling out but uh, trust me that's not going to pull out all right so i shot my grade um right off of that point there i figured this end was the highest was the highest spot by looking at it and i was quite surprised that it's off as much as it is um off it's off that it slopes as much as it does probably about five and a half inches you can see the line there that's the same that's up there there Obviously this corner I figured would slope off and even even right to this post this really does slope down. Um, I probably scraped a little bit more out of this particular spot here um, when I had the mini over here I was clearing away so that uh, I could put my when I set these posts what I do I don't just go by the string in in the doorway I cut uh, I think it was a 10 foot 11. Um, these are 10 foot doors, 10 by 10s of what I bought. And these are going to be, um, they'll be 6 by 6 on each side. So this way it'll give it a step look here. 
but a uh, six by six will go will go there um, and on this side so I take a two by six I just put it in there um, so this way I know that they're spaced. I don't have to measure them. I don't have to I can and then you can push the 8x8 up against it when you put it down I, You know as I showed I put a, a a concrete block in the bottom so I can move it around So that works out well, but I also do because you know, these are these are trusses um, So they're sitting you know on on this and on that so I want them spaced perfectly I don't want them off at all um, not that they should, but it's very difficult when you're going up against a string and moving a, a uh, timber that weighs uh, 400 pounds when you're trying to move it, especially when you're by yourself. Um, so these were spaced out. Um, I screwed two of them together to uh, get my, I think it was 23 foot one because they're 24 foot trusses, but they're measured from the inside. So again, um, I cleared a little bit of a space for the board to fit and probably took a hair more out of this side just by when I scraped it out at the end. But um, I'm just going to grab some material that I've been digging up um, and I'm going to compact it. But I will, I'm going to set up a two by around the perimeter because when the floor, when we pour the floor, the floor is going to come to the outside of the uh, two bys. I mean, of the eight by eight, the eight by eights, eight bys, not two bys. Um, and these are true eight inches. They're actually eight and an eighth. Um, so I, I want the um, the compacted dirt inside to be back, and I want so it, the outside edge will probably be you know a foot thick, which is which is nice around the outside. So that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. But right now I'm just going to mark. Um, I've got to cut the top of these. 8 by 8s off um, so I marked it where the um, and actually those marks are not exact so I have to redo those I guesstimated um, I put one of the cribbing blocks across which was a 4 by 4 so probably has to come up another inch from those um, and again they don't really matter I'm gonna make them a little bit taller when I cut them off it'll probably be cut it probably about six or eight inches higher than the 10 foot mark um, so I was debating on I got I bought 10 foot doors they're roll-up doors um, so I can cut the bottom of the track I think I'm gonna make them nine foot tall and not 10 foot or where I'm gonna set them for I'm gonna set them for a nine foot tall door rather than a 10 um, just because it doesn't really matter there's nothing I'm gonna put in here that is taller than nine feet that would fit <laughs> because you know anything that's taller than nine feet uh, wouldn't fit lengthwise in here anyway so I think that's what I'm gonna do but I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out where it is I'm gonna reshoot my grade um, off of you know off of this one because this is the this is the tallest this one has to be the tallest one so I'm gonna work on that one get it and then uh, cut the tops and I'll get a shot of that um, I'll use the man basket and uh, and the monster the uh, Sasquatch saw that's what I'll be cutting them with and then I've got to still cut through with a uh, sawzall afterwards because that that'll cut uh, six inches and I so I'll have about two inches inch and three quarter that I'll have to cut got the face marked here to the grade height and what I do is I'm measuring down the thickness of the shoe which is three and a quarter inches on these on these uh, Sasquatch saws so I'm measuring three and a quarter down from the line and clamping the Swanson speed square on the three and a quarter so this way I don't have to hold it 
and I don't have to watch it other than keeping it flat on the square. And it always helps to bring up the to bring up the cord with you. I cheated before I already had it up there. <laughs> so that's why I forgot to grab it. Just give it a loop so it doesn't fall back down on you because inevitably it will fall down on you. At least it'll fall down on me. you know It's all but about an inch and a quarter or so, two inches, yeah, about an inch and a quarter. So, we'll take the old faithful quarter cable tiger saw, which will make quick work of it. And the most important part of this cut, the way these trusses attach, they attach on the inside. So outside is not as crucial obviously you want it I already have a line run for you it's my birthday 59 today 59. all right here we are at the end so they're all cut they're all cut to the height um, as I said I've got 10 by 10 doors it's gonna be a 10 by 10 roll up here here there's gonna be a window same as that in David's room it'll be a walk-in three-foot door on the side there so what i'm i just got everything ready so on the ends i keep it back an inch and a half the truss will be up against that two by that's just for a spacer it's back an inch and a half this way i can put an inch and a half on the truss and then there's an inch and a half girt that will go on the outside there so that will make the siding be straight up and I'll show you how I do that um, when I get to that but and it's a lot easier at least on the gable ends I just put one there so it just helps to get the first one in place and the other ones are a little bit easier once the first one's installed when you can put you can put a uh, you know you can put some of the purlins across and those will go the other ones will go in the middle so it's only the end ones that are closer to the end so all right well that's it for this video um i'm going to uh we'll do the, wendy's gonna help me tomorrow we're gonna set the trusses and get the um get the purlins up and then the after that i'll get uh, the next video will be um um ordering the metal not, I'm not going to make a video of ordering the metal but um, when I install the roof and then um, I'm going to probably um, have the floor I'm going to put the floor in um, before I do the walls but at least I'll get the roof on so uh, 
So as usual, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. And um, after the video, once I get back working again, when I get back uh, working out on the lake, um, I'm going to go back to making in the way that I used to make them. Um, longer, more digging. If you don't want to watch it, you could skip forward. But I know I've got a couple of people, more than a couple of people, that have said, oh, why don't you make it longer? It's relaxing to watch. And I agree with that because I like to watch it. I, you know... I, some people say, oh, I do this all day. Why would I watch your video? That's what I do. Well, I, I watch. I watch other people. So, And I actually watch my own because I don't get to see it when I do it. So um, mostly why I'm doing this is so down the years from now, I can look back when I'm senile and I can, uh, I can see what I did. So, um, so just to let you know, the videos are going to be longer once I get back digging. And that's the way I want to do them.